What's up, Kelly Gang? All right, so we got this uh, this nice comet problem here. So basically, we have this elliptical orbit, right? It's a comet that's orbiting the sun. And so as it gets closer to that center of the orbit or whatever, the closest part of the orbit, its velocity is going to speed up. And it wants us to find what that change in velocity is. As it goes from this point, you know, 2.3 times 10 to the 11 meters, up to 4.2 times 10 to the 10 meters. And it gets us an initial velocity and wants us to find that after velocity. So let's get started on this problem. So to solve a problem like this, we're going to need to use our work energy theorem. I feel like I have made three videos today, and this is the third time I'm using this formula. It's just the math, it's just the ultimate physics formula. I'm pretty sure you can solve any physics problem with this. So change in, um, change, or I guess work non-conservative is equal to the change in energy. So work non-conservative, that's kind of like air resistance or friction. That's something that we're not going to be looking at in this uh, system here, because it's a kind of a closed system, right? There's no friction. There's no one pushing on the planets. So we're going to take this to be zero. So then we're just looking at change in energy. So we need to think about what our changes in energy are going to be. So in a system like this, its velocity is going to speed up. Like that's what we're trying to find. So we're going to have change in kinetic energy of our comet. So it's going to be change in kinetic energy. And then we're also going to be looking at um, change in gravitational energy, right? Change in gravitational energy. So let's expand this out some more, right? Zero is going to be equal to, uh, so it's going to be one and a half mass and then velocity final squared minus velocity initial squared. Uh, and this is the mass of the comet, right? So I'm going to label that C, mass of comet. And then gravitational potential energy, we're going to need to use not, you know, whatever mass gravity height, we're going to need to use a different formula. So it's going to be uh, negative. So usually it would be positive, it would be the final minus initial, and that's what we're doing. But it's a negative comes out front of this system, so it's kind of weird. But it's the gravitational constant times the mass of the sun times the mass of the comet divided by a radius final, right? And then minus, the negative stays there, gravitational times the mass of the, uh, mass of the sun, that's not a G. Mass times the mass of the comet divided by radius initial, right? So what are we looking at here? So how are we going to simplify this, right? Well, we see that we have mass of comet in all of these, so we can divide by mass of comet, and of course it's just going to cancel that out. So mass of comet, great. We don't need mass of comet. So let's look at how this would look even further. Uh, so I'm going to expand this out some more because we want velocity final. This is what we're trying to find. So it's going to be one half velocity final squared minus one half velocity initial squared and then so it's going to be minus and then we can factor out a lot of these so the g can come out and then the mass of the sun can come out and then it's just going to be um, one over radius final and then i guess uh, plus because the negative negative gravity times mass of the sun one over radius initial so we have like all of this stuff and we're trying to find velocity final. So basically all I have to do is rearrange this to get it in a system that we want it to be. So I'm gonna move everything except velocity final over because that's what we're trying to find. So let's do that. So it's gonna be, we're gonna add this over so it's gonna be gravity times mass of the sun. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna group these two together. I'm gonna put, it's gonna be one over uh, radius final minus one over radius initial, right? This would be this would be positive. This would be negative. If you want to expand it out, it's cool too. It's just going to be less to plug into your calculator if you do this way. And then minus one half, or I guess plus one half because we're doing velocity initial squared, and then that's going to be equal to one half velocity final squared. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to multiply by two to get rid of that that one half, and then I'm going to take the square root of it to get rid of this square root. And then we get velocity final by itself. And make sure that this is the right formula. So GMS, or mass of the sun, one over radius final, and certain operation initial, plus one half velocity initial squared, yes. So let's plug in our numbers. All you have to do now is plug in your numbers. So it's gonna be square root of two. Gravitational constant is uh, 6.67 times, times 10 to the negative 11. I hope I'm right about that. 
I'm pretty sure I am. <laughs> Should I Google that? Nah, it's fine. I'm pretty sure that's the right number. If it's not the right number, you guys know what's going on. Uh, mass of the sun. That's something you have to know, or I guess it's something you have to look up. It should. I think it should be the problem, but you know. So it's 1.99 times 10 to the 30. I'm pretty sure that's the right number too. That's not. Tell me in the comments. So radius final is distance two. So this would be 4.2 times 10 to the 10 minus one over velocity or radius initial, which is distance one. So 2.3 times 10 to the 11. And then if you're going to take this and add one half, and then this is 2.1 times 10 to the fourth, that's its initial velocity, and then square all that. And wow, look at that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. And you're going to get 7.5 times 10 to the four meters a second. And that's final velocity. That's the velocity at the red point. And this makes sense, right? So we're starting at 2.1 meters a second, and we end up at uh, 7.5 meters a second, so it goes up by like three times as much. That's a reasonable number, right? We didn't get like, and we, it went up, which makes sense, and it didn't go up too much, so that also makes sense. So, I think we got a good answer here. That's a, that's a good reason. So, let's take solve this kind of problem. Good luck on your physics homework, guys. Stick around for some more problems, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.